Hey there everybody, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I am thrilled to be over on the Spellbinders blog today sharing a few projects that I created using the new Holiday 2019 Glimmer Plate collection from Paul Antonio. If you're unfamiliar with Paul Antonio, he is a wonderful calligrapher. I got the chance to meet him at Creativation this past year when he was there with Spellbinders, and to see him work in action was really wonderful. So I was really excited to get to use some of these plates that he did some scripting for. So I'm going to be creating a background or three backgrounds today actually, and then using my glimmer plates as my focal points against these backgrounds. For this first background, I'm making a glowing moon scene with a bunch of Copics. I'm gonna list down the colors here, but you could use as many colors as you want if you only wanted to use four or five, that's okay too. Uh, but the colors that I'm using in order are BG10, B00, B21, B05, B24, B29, and B39. There are a couple of reasons why I'm using so many colors. One, because obviously the blend is a little better as you uh, fill in those gaps between the colors. And two is, this is a very highly saturated, obviously, in Copic marker background. Um, so the more Copic markers that I use, the less ink per marker I'm using. So basically, obviously, we're coloring in in this radiating and circular pattern just to make it look like it's radiating outward. Uh, but the more Copic markers that I use or the more colors I use, the smaller space I have to fill in. So if you have a lot of Copics and you have the range to add a bunch in there, I would definitely recommend doing that. If you don't, using fewer is fine as well. Also for the darker colors, we tend to use less ink for the darker colors. Us as stampers, who I'm assuming um, are most of the people who are watching this video, as stampers, we tend to use a lot less ink anyway because the area that we're coloring in is usually quite small and then even more so on our darker tones that we use just as like uh, shadows or some detailing pieces there. So I wouldn't worry too much about using too many Copics um, or too much ink in your Copics, especially if, like I said, you have a wider range and you want to use uh, more markers than less. So as you can see, I'm going in and just making sure that I keep this curvature here because I want it to look like my moon is there. And I left that circular piece that I sort of drew, drew in by myself. I left it white. Uh, this is going to make it look really nice and bright. And then just to add a little bit more radiating in, I went in and used some darker tones just to give little just little pieces of lines sort of that just make it look a little bit more like it's actually radiating outward. I also made sure to go in with the lightest color after every darker color I put in and just help that seam in the blend there. Just to add a little bit of winter here, since this is going to be a holiday card, I'm using some white gouache. I just added it to a paint palette that I have here on my desk, and I added just a tiny bit of water, and I'm taking a paintbrush with another paintbrush that's doused in that gouache and I'm just flicking it on there and hitting it against the other paintbrush and this will create really nice white specks and gouache is a very highly pigmented and thick paint so it's my go-to when I want to make nice snowfall and snowflakes and stuff like that on a darker background. I'm now going to go ahead and start glimmering and foiling. So I'm using the Spellbinders hot foil system or glimmer hot foil system. And I've recently watched one of Yana Smakula's videos where she gives some tips on how to get the glimmer plate exactly where you'd like it. So she gives a tip on how you can use very low tack tape and kind of create this hinge. So as you can see there, I had some tape, some low tack painters tape on the very top of the glimmer plate and I made sort of a hinge so now the glimmer plate was like a door so I could pick up the glimmer plate and put my gold foil right underneath it and you want to make sure that the shiny side is up and facing the glimmer plate. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and place that onto my system and then push that timer button there at the bottom. It's going to start blinking and when it's done blinking that means that everything's all heated up. I can put my plate on top and then my shim put that nice and slow through my die cutting machine and then when I take it off I get this really perfect impression and foil the difference between this and foiling with a laminator is that you actually get the impression 
into your card front. So it looks a little bit more uh, professional and people are going to feel it to see if they can feel it and they'll actually feel that it's into the card front and that just sort of gives something a little extra special. It's also every time I've gotten a perfect impression and sometimes you do get extra little foil bits but I'll show you on the next card how you can easily get those off. So for my next card, I'm going to use one of my favorite techniques recently, and I will link a video here at the top right corner on a more in-depth look at this, but it is a faux watercolor wash, and this is using Tombow dual brush pens. Now I'm using four different uh, shades today, and I only show three here because the fourth shade was actually um, an add-in last. So I'm taking some... Uh, oh, and those shades are all in the description as well as all of the links to the products that I use today. So the first thing that I've done is taken a piece of watercolor cardstock, and this is just a Strathmore cold press watercolor. I went ahead and used some painter's tape to adhere that right to my glass mat, and I'm going to take the darkest color and just scribble in, just making sure that I get the saturation and the ink on there. Now I want this to be lightest in the middle, so I'm going to do the darkest on the top and the bottom, my next darkest just below and then on top of those darker shades, and then my lightest shade in the center. I'm then going to go ahead again and take one of my water brush pens, squeeze a little bit of water out, and just go from top to middle and then bottom to middle, making sure that I keep squeezing out any ink that I might have on my brush because I want nice clean water. To make it a little bit darker and just a little bit more holiday, I've brought in a gray color for just the very top and the very bottom just to give it a little bit darker saturation there on the edges so that like again, I said, it just looks a little bit darker, not so bright. Obviously, I wanted this to be a little bit of a non-traditional card with the colors that I chose, but I thought it would look a little nicer with the darker uh, portions there at the top and the bottom. So I've gone ahead now and I'm choosing the Holiday Cheer Glimmer Plate, and I'm using some holographic foil. I have yet to use this holographic foil because I haven't found the perfect background for it or the perfect color for it. And I have to say that I think I've decided that this bright pink is the absolute perfect background uh, for this holographic foil. So here I'm actually going to go ahead and show you how I remove that top plate there from the glimmer foil system and just put my so that was both the plate that goes on top and the shim. Again, I'll go ahead and off camera put that through my Platinum 6 die cutting machine. And when I take off this foil, you can see it's beautiful, but there are some extra little pieces in there where it foiled where it wasn't supposed to. No worries, that's actually not going to be embedded into your card front because there was no place on the actual plate that was pushing that in there. So what I like to do is just take a sand eraser, a Tombow sand eraser, and just gently go over those areas and it comes off super easy, no residue, nothing like that. The only thing I would say to be careful about is the background. If you go too hard with that sand eraser, it can definitely take off some of your background depending on what medium you chose. So for this, I just went nice and easy because I didn't want any of that saturation in those areas to be taken off. For my final card today, I just kept it really simple. I used the Alphabet Calligraphy Ornament Set or Glimmer Plate, and then I used a piece of really deep red textured cardstock and some gold foil just to foil that on top of there. And then I tied a nice white bow and placed that right on top and called it a day. Sometimes you just need a really nice, simple holiday card, and that's what this one is. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how I used these to create some of my holiday cards for this year. If you have any questions about the foil system, please leave them in the comments. And when you're sharing your projects with us, please make sure to hashtag never stop making that way spellbinders can see your projects. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.